So, very warm welcome to our Easter Sunday morning service here online. 
Don't we just love Easter Sunday morning? I always say it's the happiest day of the whole year. And yet it's so strange being here in Shore Street on my own. I'm quite sad in many ways. The pews in front of me are empty. This whole worship area is empty. The whole building is empty. That's the sad news. But the glad news is that it's not the only thing that's empty. The tomb is also empty. Jesus was buried, laid to rest in the grave. But the grave is now empty because Jesus Christ, our Saviour, is risen from the dead, alive forevermore. And because he lives, you and I, through saving faith and trust in him, have this confidence that Death is not the end of us, but that we too shall live forever, loving, living, enjoying God's presence for all of eternity. Hallelujah. So let's begin our Easter Sunday morning service with that ancient response where the minister calls out, Christ is risen three times, and the congregation shout back and respond, He is risen indeed. So let's do it with faith. And with love. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Let's praise and worship and delight ourselves in God. Let me lead you in a, a prayer of thanksgiving and praise. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, it is with joy-filled, joy-full hearts and minds and souls that we gather together as one. We gather to worship and to praise and, and to adore you. For you have given your one, your only Son to die upon that cross for our sins, our sakes, our salvation. Thank you that he has torn down every barrier that once kept us away from you. And now as little children, as sons and daughters, we come freely into your presence, Father, to enjoy you, to bless you, to give thanks that, that by the death of your Son that he has taken away all our sin, and that his blood has cleansed us from every sin and we are free no longer slaves to sin no longer slaves to death but just free to love you and enjoy you father in heaven we can't put into words adequately the joy in our hearts that you have raised christ from the dead you've broken death's awful grip on us you set us free and now father we want to say that we love you we bless you we give you thanks for who you are, for how good you are to us, for all that you have done and won for us. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. There's some worship for you. would love you to either just listen to it, soak it in, or if you know it, just to feel free and to join with us right now. Here's the worship.
message love and sorrow meet our thorns compose so rich a crown where the whole
And here in uh, uh, Shore Street, we just love birthdays. And Phil is going to do our birthday blessings for us today. And I, I know at least a couple of people have had a birthday in, in this past week. And, and after Phil, Ashley's going to jump in and, and talk to you, boys and girls. So that, that's going to be great. And, and, and after Ashley, Gillian and Isla have been doing one of those um, brilliant songs that they've been doing with all the actions. And, and this song I love is an Easter song. One, two, three, Jesus is alive. So let, let's hear from them all uh, as they lead us in this bit. Hello everybody, it's your youth worker Phil McQuaid here. Uh, hope you're all keeping safe. Just wanted to wish anybody who has a birthday coming up soon a big happy birthday. For all the kids, material is being posted out to you. And for all the adults, a dairy milk bar is being posted out to you. These will only be posted out once a week. So only if you have a birthday, please private message the Facebook page. But as it's a birthday coming up soon, let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for birthdays, Lord. We give you uh, thanks for all our congregation, God. And if it's their birthday coming up, Lord, please let them know that we are still celebrating with them, even though we can't be with them in person, God. And we look to rejoice with each other when we meet again. So Heavenly Father, be with these people. Thank you for them. Bless them. And we pray all these things in your name. Amen. Thank you, everybody, and stay safe. Hello, my name is Ashleen, and I am one of the youth and children's workers here in Shore Street Presbyterian. And this morning, I want to talk to you about something very exciting. It's all about secrets and surprises. I wonder if any of you have ever been told a secret that you had to keep. Maybe it was about a surprise party for one of your friends or your family. Or perhaps you made something that was really kind for one of your family. And it was a secret between you and your brothers and sisters. Or perhaps you have one of these. There might be something inside it, but it's a secret. And we don't know what it is. Well, I have a secret for you. Today is a very exciting and happy day and I'll maybe tell you why a little bit later on. But we've been thinking all about the story of Jesus this week. He didn't keep any secrets but he was full of surprises. Think about all that Jesus did when he was on earth. And it tells us in the Bible of all of these stories, such as he fed 5,000 people, he walked on water, he made people able to walk, and he helped blind people see. How amazing is that? Lots and lots of amazing miracles are found in the Bible. And this week we've been thinking about how Jesus did something so special for us. He died on the cross for our sins and that's all the things that we have done wrong and he forgave us for those. But it wasn't a secret that that was going to happen. As there was a man called Isaiah and he prophesied and that basically means that God, he told Isaiah, he spoke to him and said, that Jesus would die on the cross and that he would raise to life again. Isn't that pretty amazing? And we learn of lots of surprises in the book of John. And Mary, she was there and she walked to the tomb where Jesus was laid and there was a big stone in front of it. And she got there to go see what was going on but the stone had moved. Where was Jesus? She stood by the tomb and she was really, really upset. She didn't know where Jesus was. And in the Bible, it tells it that there was two angels sitting where Jesus's body had been. And they asked Mary, why are you so upset? Then a man, he came and he asked Mary, who is it you're looking for? Mary thought that the man was a gardener. Then he said, Mary. And she instantly knew that it was Jesus. What a surprise. Jesus, he is alive. And he is alive today. 
we as Christians, we believe that this is a very exciting and a very happy day. But there is one secret that no one has the answer to apart from God. And that is that Jesus will come back again one day. And that is a big surprise for us all. But today I want you to think about how Jesus is with us because he is alive today. We know that he is always with us. And so let's celebrate that, that he is alive. And this week I want you to be thinking about how Jesus is alive today, that he is our living hope and that we can always trust in him. love that song. Uh, let's pick up our Bibles if you have them with you. I'd love it, you know, when we do come back together that you start and bring your own Bibles with you each week. That would be amazing uh, if you do that. Sonia's going to speak to us this morning and share uh, from God's Word and, and as she talks she's going to read Bible verses throughout her talk. So uh, as Sonia speaks let's really expect that the risen Lord is going to come right into the ring where you're sitting uh, and by his beautiful Holy Spirit he's really going to speak into your life. Sonia. Good morning and a very happy Easter to you from us here in Ballywalter. I'm out in my she shed um, and I just wanted to share a few thoughts with you today. Don't you just love Easter? Even in this time of trials and suffering and chaos around in our world, we'll look at the empty cross and the empty tomb and we have this tremendous hope of sins forgiven and hope not only for this life but also for eternity. Jesus is not dead. He is alive. He is risen from the dead. He is alive. And throughout the scriptures, we have seen him changing lives and we testify that he still changes lives today. 
and as I was thinking about this morning and what I wanted to share I was thinking of three different characters who had their lives changed whenever they met Jesus and I want us to look at those characters together. The first person that I would love us to think about this morning is Jesus' very first disciple, Peter. Peter was probably a teenager whenever he met Jesus. He was a fisherman, he was in the family business. He was just busy getting on with his own life. We could imagine that he was a hard working guy, a physical guy, a guy that wouldn't have been too afraid of what other people thought of him, a guy that just got things done. And when you think of those first moments whenever he met Jesus, and you can read about it in Matthew chapter 4, if you want to check it out. Well, Peter and his brother Andrew, they were out in the shore, they were casting their nets in to sea. Jesus came along and Jesus said to them, Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They didn't hesitate. They left what they were doing and they followed Jesus. And Peter was totally sold out for Jesus. He was totally committed. He was ready for action. He was actually one of Jesus' closest friends and he got to see and do amazing things as he journeyed with Jesus. And probably when you think of Peter, you think back to last week's sermon that Alvin did and when Peter stepped out of that boat to walk on water with Jesus and then he fell in. And we might question his faith, but then we quickly realise that he was the brave one. He was the one that took that risk in the first place to get out of the boat. You see, Peter was determined and he was ready to learn. When Jesus was asking his disciples, who do people think that I am? It was Peter. It was Peter who spoke up and he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus affirmed him in that moment. He says, you're Peter, you're the rock. And on the rock I will build a church and nothing will overcome it. You know, just throughout the Gospels, we just see Peter seemed to get it. Peter loved Jesus. Peter was willing to die for Jesus. And he felt that if other people turn away, he never would. He wouldn't give up. He wouldn't let go. He wouldn't move on. He was in it for the long haul with Jesus. And right up to the end, well, almost the end, he was. He stayed with Jesus in the garden. He was a disciple that cut the ear of the soldier when they came to arrest Jesus. He even followed along to see where they were bringing Jesus. You see, he wasn't giving up. He wasn't letting go. He loved Jesus. But then it only took one moment. And whether it was a fear of people, whether it was the pressure in the situation, whether it was the heat of everything else going on around about him, or if it was doubt that overtook him, we just don't know. But we just know in that moment that that same guy who wasn't giving up, who wasn't letting go, who loved Jesus, well, in that moment, he did let go. He did give up. He denied even knowing Jesus. It says in the Bible that he called down curses on himself and he swore to the people around about him, I don't know him. And as soon as it was done, as soon as he had denied Jesus, he realised what he had done and he went and he wept bitterly. Later on in the story of Peter, we find him back in his boat, back looking for fish. And I often think when I read John chapter 21, did Peter return to that old life because he thought that he was done with his Jesus life? Did he somehow think it was easier or safer? Or did he think that Jesus was done with him? I wonder, as you think about the story of Peter, do you relate to him? Was there a time in your life where you were completely sold out to Jesus? A time when nothing would have stopped you from following him wherever he led you? Was there a time when you spoke boldly to others, did crazy things because you thought that that's what he wanted you to do? A time in your life where you were completely transformed? When you knew that you loved Jesus with everything that you've got? But then, just like Peter, something happened in your life. Something happened along the way. Perhaps it was something big that you did. Or perhaps it was a series of small things that worked together to move you from a passionate relationship with Jesus to something dull, something that looked more like your old life. Maybe you feel that you have let Jesus down. You feel that there's no big story for you anymore. That that calling you felt in your life, it, it maybe now feels a little bit tainted. 
I encourage you today to revisit Peter's story. You see, Peter may have failed big time. He may have done the very thing that he never thought he would do. He thought other people were capable of it, but not him. He may have gone back to his boat, to his old way, to the safe, familiar place. But Jesus hadn't given up on him. Jesus calls him back. If you want to check out John chapter 21, we see Jesus asking Peter to follow him. You see, Jesus' calling was still on Peter's life. Jesus hadn't given up on Peter. And as you read on, read through the book of Acts, you see Peter's story, you see how he lived for Jesus with everything he had. I encourage you, if you're in a place where you feel that you have disappointed God, a place where you know that your heart doesn't burn for Jesus like it used to, I encourage you to simply come back to Jesus. He hasn't moved. He is waiting for you and he doesn't want you to waste another moment. He wants you to step back into that calling that he placed in your life. This Easter, if you're feeling like Peter that you've let him down, this Easter, let this be a time where you respond to Jesus' call once again in your life, where he is saying to you, come, follow me. But there's another guy involved in the Easter story. It might be somebody that doesn't come to your mind quickly or easily. We actually don't have a name for this person. We don't know too much about him. We know simply what he did for a living and we know the impact that Jesus had on his life. This guy was a Roman soldier. He would have been a tough guy in his job, he would have had to be. He would have seen a lot of stuff. He would have seen many people crucified. He was probably involved in punishment beatings. He had seen it all. And he was probably hardened to much of what he had saw, seen. As a Roman, he would have been familiar with the religious types. He would have known and dealt with the Jews before. He knew that the, the leaders of the Jewish religion, they were, they were hard and their people had lots of rules and regulations to keep their people in order. In fact, probably for him as a Roman soldier, they seemed to create more work for him. He may even have looked at the religious types and thought that they were a bunch of hypocrites who said one thing and then acted another way. That this Roman soldier, he was just doing his job, getting on with his life. And his life involved crucifying people. And it sounds really horrific to us now. But back in Jesus' time, crucifixion was a norm and so many people would have been crucified. The job wouldn't have faced them. It was probably something that he'd grown used to. It was probably something he had down to a fine art. No doubt he had crucified many as a person in his time. Those soldiers would have had to use brute force. There would have been no mercy. But on that particular Friday, this soldier knew it was different from the outset. This Jesus person, he'd been saying that he was God's son, that he was the Messiah. The Jewish leaders hadn't liked that. And the soldier would have known that they had set this Jesus person up. And as they said about capturing Jesus, the soldier had seen that Jesus didn't make a run for it. He didn't try to get away. He didn't curse in them. He didn't spit in them. It was like Jesus was willing to go to the cross. The soldier would have noticed that Jesus was different from the others who were being crucified. In fact, that whole atmosphere was different. The day itself, do you remember? It was eerie. The sky had turned black in the middle of the day for three hours straight. When there would have been other prisoners cursing and swearing and gasping for their last breath, this soldier heard the voice of Jesus speaking in a different language. He thought that Jesus was maybe calling out for help. He didn't really know what Jesus had said. He just knew that after Jesus had spoken, Jesus died. And in that moment, the Bible says that the earth shifted, that rocks split, and this soldier knew that the guy that they had crucified was someone special. Matthew 27 verse 54 says this, when the, when the centurion, the soldier, and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and they exclaimed, surely he was the son of God. What a big, bold statement from a godless Roman soldier. Surely he was the son of God. 
We don't have lots of information about this soldier, but we could imagine that life has hardened him. He knew enough about people not to trust too many of them. He'd probably seen enough religious people and that probably wouldn't have enticed him. I wonder, as you think about this guy, as you think about this Roman soldier, can you relate to him? Have you seen so much that you doubt that there's any good or indeed any God in the world? Are you wary of religion, critical of it? Maybe you feel that religious people are just a bunch of hypocrites. Or maybe life itself has left you feeling hard and you want nothing more than just to get on with your life and do your job. I don't blame you. And I apologise for what you've seen in us, what you've seen in the church, what you've seen done in the name of religion. But I want you to know that what made a difference for this Roman soldier was meeting Jesus, seeing Jesus, experiencing Jesus. It was when he encountered Jesus that he realised Jesus is exactly who he claimed to be, the Saviour, the Son of God. You know, this Easter is an opportunity for you to explore the real Jesus, the living Jesus. I encourage you, get your Bibles out, read Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and find out who the real Jesus is. Don't write him off, allow him to speak to you this Easter. Finally, the last person that I want to look at is a woman, a woman whose life was impacted whenever she met Jesus. She met Jesus when her life seemed hopeless, helpless. Again, we don't know much about her story, but we know that she's written off a number of times throughout the Gospels. Her name is Mary. She was known as Mary Magdalene because that's the place where she was from. And Mary met Jesus when her life was troubled. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 8 that Mary had seven demons before Jesus freed her from them. And we can only imagine the incredible suffering that these demons would have done to this poor woman. We don't know what happened to her. We don't know what caused these demons to enter her. We only know that that was her life situation. And those demons would have affected her health. They would have affected how she spoke, how she related to others. Perhaps her very demeanour was a sign of the carnage that these demons inflicted on her. I don't imagine that she was the kind of woman that many people wanted to be around. The kind of woman that many people felt safe around. Instead, we can assume that she would have been isolated from the rest of society because of her troubled state. But the amazing part of Mary's story is that transformation is possible. When Jesus is on the scene, life can and will change. Luke 8 tells us that Mary was set free from the demon possession and she became one of Jesus' most devoted followers. She's mentioned time and time again along with other women who helped to support Jesus in his ministry. They gave out of their own means to see God's kingdom grow. But Mary, she not only followed Jesus when the going was good, but she also followed him to the cross to see his brutal death. Matthew 27 verse 55 tells us, Many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them was Mary Magdalene. You know, at the cross, many of Jesus' other followers had fled in fear, but Mary had remained. She wasn't given up on the one who had changed her life. Then on day three, after Jesus had died, she was found at Jesus' tomb. If you turn to John chapter 20, you can read this. John chapter 20 and verse 10. The disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said. I don't know where they've put him. At this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there. But she didn't realise it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was a gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. 
she turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. You know, as Mary had stood outside that tomb weeping, thinking that Jesus' body had been taken, Jesus appeared to her and he shared the news that he was indeed risen. She didn't recognise him at first, but as soon as he spoke her name, she knew it was her Jesus. She knew it was her Lord, her Saviour, her God. And she became the first evangelist, the first missionary to share the good news that Jesus had risen from the dead. Imagine this woman, Mary Magdalene, who was once possessed by demons, was now telling people about the risen Lord. Wow, how's that for Jesus changing lives? You know, no matter who you are, no matter what's going on in your life, whether you're afflicted with illness, whether you're possessed by demons, whether you're rich or poor, if you're isolated in these moments or in company, Jesus can change your life. We don't have to remain in the place that we once were. When we allow Jesus to come in and take hold of our life, to be the one who guides us, when we admit that we can't fix ourselves, that we'll never be good enough, we'll never be well enough, holy enough, we can't do it on our own, that we need Jesus. When we say, I need you, I need you to do what only you can do. I want that same transformation that Mary had. A transformation that changed her life for good and for God. A transformation that gave her a desire to know and follow Jesus her whole life. Do you long for that transformation? Easter is a time for transformation. Easter is a time for change. Perhaps for you, you want to take that first step in welcoming Jesus into your life, to give him permission to work in your life and to do what he wants to do. If that's you, I would encourage you to pray along with me this morning. We're going to pray a prayer where we invite Jesus to come in, to work in our lives, to change us. Let's pray together. Jesus, Jesus, I need you. I can't fix my life on my own. I've tried to be in control of everything. I've tried so hard to be good, but I've failed so many times. I need you to help me. I want to put you first in my life. I pray that you would come into my life by your Holy Spirit, that you would forgive me of my sin, that you would make me, a, make me a new person from the inside out. I want to be transformed by you. I put my faith in you from this day on. Amen. This Easter can be the beginning of something new, something wonderful for you. If you have lost that passion, that fire in your heart for Jesus, if you've messed up and you've never come back to him, today is the day to hear his voice calling again, come follow me. If you're cynical about life, if you're cynical about God, religion, use this time to explore who Jesus is, who he says he is. Don't waste these moments. And finally, if you prayed that prayer with me, if your heart longs for change, you want Jesus in your life, well, today is the beginning of a wonderful relationship with a risen Saviour. Please, please get in touch with us if there's any way we can support you or encourage you on your journey. Again, I wish you a very happy Easter. God bless you. Thank you so much, Sonia. Love it. So helpful. So love what Sonia shares with us and just the way that God uses her. May I lead us in a prayer together? Can I pray that you follow with me? It's just really a prayer of response 
to all that the Father has been speaking into your hearts, the Son you spoke. Father in heaven, we want to keep our spirits soft and, and open and gentle and responsive to everything that you've been saying to us in these last few moments. I don't know, as Son you spoke, did you feel the Holy Spirit pressing into your life? Did you sense the Father speaking into something in your life and calling you back, back to him, back to passionate, committed love that you once had? And were you aware of the, the living Jesus reaching lovingly in your soul, just encouraging you, strengthening you for all that you're going through? Come, Holy Spirit, we give you full permission to do whatever you want to do in us and with us and through us. We're all in, we're totally yours. And it's not just about ourselves, what we're thinking about others. We keep praying for those around us, those in the front lines battling with the virus. But we remember, we pray for, for you in the hospitals, you who are serving in those hospitals, in the community, in care homes, those going into individual homes. Some of you work in 12 our shift 60 hour weeks. Father, we want to pray for every person who is serving, working, loving, caring. Every person who's struggling to get over to sleep when they do get home, if they do get home. Father, we pray for those essential workers who in whatever way, and there are hundreds of different ways that, that people right across and the board are, are working just to keep things going for us. And, and, and Father, we pray for those who are feeling exhausted and wearied and, and feeling the stress, feeling the strain. Pray for those of you at home just trying to work from home, look after children, keep things going, care for family, relatives, feeling busy and stressed. Pray for those of you who are um, sitting on your own, feeling quite isolated and lonely, finding the days long, we, we just lift you up Love you to know that loving nearness of Jesus. We pray for every boy and every girl who is listening with us and praying with us right now, who's feeling in any way anxious or worried or upset, not, not really understanding. Father, we lift up every boy, every girl to you. We pray for those in hospitals right now in ICU wards battling for their lives. We pray for, for them, for their families, for those who have already lost ones and, and haven't been able to fully grieve. Father, we want to pray for those giving political leadership to us, whether in Westminster or here in Stormont. And, and we pray for Boris Johnson. We lift up Arlene Foster, Michelle O'Neill, Robin Swan, every government minister and the teams behind them as they try and lead us through this crisis. Father, would you give them wisdom? Would you give them patience? perseverance, cooperation. I'd love to give
give you a moment and if there are particular people on your mind, I'd love you to just lift up uh, those names before the Lord right now. Somebody who's in your heart, somebody who's in your mind. Love us to pray together just as one. And we'll use the Lord's Prayer to do that. And though we're in different places, you know, we are and we have a real sense that the Spirit of God living in us unites us in the most um, powerful way. So let's pray. Our Father. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to finish with worship. Just so here's some worship just to lift your heart. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night And through the Oh
much for tuning in to us again and uh, we're hopefully doing other videos so please keep checking this page tell others if you find it helpful the transcript of this talk is, as well uh, as the video will be on our Shore Street web page shorestreet.org we've made some changes that I think it will help Last Sunday afternoon was amazing to know that people all over the island of Ireland were praying between three and four. And some people for some of the hour, some for all of the hour. The last ten minutes to get down on our knees and, and just cry out to our Heavenly Father for His mercy and help. And so calls God out, let's do it again on Easter Sunday. Let's do it this afternoon. And, and let's call out to our loving Father. Again, we want to say we love you, we're praying, we're happy for you to send us private messages and prayer requests. We're ringing around our senior members in our church family. We're producing material for our children and for our young people. And our, our team, our staff team are working hard and on that. Bless you. Can we pray together the grace that unite our hearts and spirits. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you.